Many of these residents in the backwaters of Napak travel for at least two kilometers to access the nearest safe water points. Most of the villages here are without safe water points. However, Moroto district has a safe water coverage of 70% with 75% functionality. The problem is most residents are not willing to repair broken boreholes. For instance, residents of Kanamokol village claim that they are either too poor or that their neighbors are unwilling to contribute money for repairing this borehole. <laughs> A few of the households here can contribute to repair the bowl. And there are those who are reluctant who don't want. The people say there's no money, there's no money, so we remain like that. And that's why there's need for strengthening water source committees, first forming them and making sure they are strengthened so that they are able to raise the water fees, the user fees, collect user fees. And these user fees can be used for operations and maintenance. At least 406 million out of the 490 million shillings doled out to Moroto district for the district water and sanitation grant is used for water supply and none of the funds are channeled towards repair. In Karamoja, apart from building dams, the government has also put up windmills to help provide water to many rural areas. This windmill was constructed by the government nine years ago to solve the water crisis here in Karamoja. It's quite an impressive project. 18,000 liters of reservoir, plus these four points where the animals can drink from. District leaders, however, say the funding is not enough since it does not address most of their needs. So what we normally narrow ourselves to is uh, water point construction, uh, construction of cattle troughs, and then public toilets. They go to the bar all day and waste a lot of time. And when they get a little, or the people are struggling with that one bowel, the issue of hygiene now is compromised. Because the little water which is being got from there can be prioritized for domestic issues other than hygiene. In every meeting that we, we have with the community, we call upon them to own these uh, properties and make good use of them, even by having structures that manage them in a place. Staffing also remains a challenge, especially following government's order to hold recruitment in some districts. Human resource needs, needs to be increased, but there are capacities in planning, in budgeting, in monitoring, in coordinating uh, water sanitation and hygiene in their different um, areas of work is causing you know, a lot of gaps. Some districts are also blamed for underutilizing the district water and sanitation conditional grant. The districts delay a lot with the procurement process. But the good thing right now is a new law that is in place that allows the districts to get pre-qualified firms to contract works up to 200 million without necessarily going through open bidding process. The districts however blame the government for releasing funds when it is too late. A consortium of NGOs working on the water and sanitation sector under the Uganda Water and Sanitation NGO Network, UASNET, believe that the government should allocate more money to the water sector. We also know that the sector is doing you know, great in terms of trying to address those challenges through the working groups, uh, through trying to use, in a way, effectively, the resources that, the little resources that they get. They also want the government to change the allocation formula to water-stressed districts. Part of the initiative to solve some of the issues in the sector include regular meetings for players in the sector, just like this one in Moroto, where they are expected to brainstorm and share experiences. Access to safe water in rural areas is at about 62%, according to a 2012 estimate. It is feared that if the funding remains the same, you got